just as modules and themes are updated from time to time, Drupal itself is also updated throughout any given version's lifetime. The process here is slightly different, however, from updating modules and themes, and it's a bit more involved. We're going to go through the whole process right here, but know that if you go to your file system and cPanel, we're going to pull up our file manager and go to web root. If you're doing this through FTP, you just simply use that interface instead. If you go to the core directory, scroll down, you'll see an upgrade.txt file, which if you view and scroll down to minor and patch version updates, you have a list of steps that walk you through the same process. But we're going to go through the whole thing here so you can see exactly how it's done and you can follow along. So if your site is telling you that Drupal core needs to be updated, there's no automatic way to do this, unlike with modules and themes. You have to do this the manual way, and it's a little bit different even from updating modules and themes manually. So first, we need to download the new version of Drupal core, which we will get by clicking on this download link. We could also just go and get it straight from drupal.org if we wanted to. And we're going to save that just somewhere on our own computer. Once that's downloaded, let's go back to our file system on our server and go to public underscore HTML. We're going to start deleting things. Now, before we do this, as always with any type of update on a Drupal site, make sure you back up your file system and back up your database and put your site in maintenance mode. You should have already done that. If you're following along with this tutorial, we've already done those three things. If you haven't done those three things and you're following along, make sure you do them all before you go any further, otherwise you risk losing your site. So just make sure you have everything backed up in case you need to restore. Put your site in maintenance mode. And once you've done that, we're going to first delete the core directory, the folder called core, in our site's root directory. This can be a little nerve-wracking if you've never done it before, because that's basically the folder that makes your whole site work, but everything's fine because we're going to be replacing it in just a second. Next, we're going to delete the vendor directory. Once you've done that, make sure you do not touch any of the four remaining directories, modules, profiles, sites, and themes. If you have any custom directories of your own, make sure you leave those as well. Then we're going to delete all of the files. However, if you've made any uh, manual configuration changes to .htaccess or robots.txt or composer.json or anything here, make sure you save backups of those files so that you can manually re-implement those changes later. Commonly, if we view .htaccess very quickly, it's not uncommon that you have a rewrite base directive here, especially if you have a site that is in a subdirectory of a domain. If this is uncommented and you have some subdirectory here for your website, just make sure you save that information so you can go and replace that and put that back in on the new version of .htaccess that you'll have in a minute. So if you have any manual changes on any of these files, just make sure you save those files somewhere where you can go back to those. And then we're going to delete all of these. So right now things look pretty bare once we've done that. We just have these four directories left and we're not going to touch them. We're going to leave them perfectly alone. Once we've done that, we're going to upload the new version of Drupal that we just downloaded. Choose File, Drupal 8.something.tar.gz, open that. And it might take 15 seconds to a minute to upload. And when that's done, we'll go back to our site, reload the page in our file system, and now we have that Drupal tar.gz file. We will extract that right here. Again, if you're using an FTP client, it's best to extract it on your own computer and then upload the Drupal directory. Once you've done that, we'll get rid of this tar.gz file. We don't need that anymore. 
And now we're going to navigate into this new Drupal-8.something folder. And we're going to replace everything that we just removed. So we'll start with core. We're going to move that up one level so it's in our site root directory. We're putting that straight into public underscore HTML. Again, it's very important that you do not do anything with modules, profiles, sites, or themes. Don't overwrite your existing directories with these stock directories. Otherwise, it's going to cause big problems on your site. You're going to lose a lot of your stuff. We do need to move vendor back up one directory. You could also be copying these as well. It doesn't really make a difference, but we're going to delete all of this in a minute anyway. So we're going to move that into public HTML. Then we're going to put all of these files into public HTML. And we should be left with just modules, profiles, sites, and themes, which once again, we're not going to do anything with. We're going to stay away from those. Let's move back up one level and our site should look pretty much back to normal. At this point, if there were any changes that you had made to your .ht access or robots.txt files or anything like that, you want to go ahead and manually restore those changes now. And then go ahead and delete this drupal-8.something folder. We're done with that. We don't want it conflicting with anything in our installation. Now we've done the scary part and it's time just to go back to our site and run update.php. We do that by simply navigating to our domain slash update.php. And you should get a page that looks like this. If you get a page telling you that you're not allowed to access this page, don't worry. You simply go to your file manager. Again, only do this if your page doesn't look like this right now. If you go to your file manager and go to sites, default, then edit your settings.php. You might have to manage your permissions in order to edit this. But if you go here and edit settings.php, if you do a control F search for update underscore free, you'll find this update free access setting. Change that to true in all caps temporarily. And that will allow you to navigate to this page, even if you're not logged in as an administrator. And we'll just want to make sure that we undo this change later. But in most cases, you won't have to worry about that, especially if you're logged in as an admin. Make sure one final time that you've backed up absolutely everything and you've put your site into maintenance mode. And once you've done everything we've gone through, you'll click continue and let the site do its work. In fact, in this version to version update, we didn't require any changes to the database. This all just depends on how the new version of whatever we're updating treats the database. If Drupal needs to change the way information is stored, it'll need to update certain things in the database. If not, as was the case here, it'll simply tell you no pending updates. You can move along. So once you're here, let's just go back to the front page. Make sure everything looks normal. and Everything looks normal to me. If you did have to change update free access to true. Just make sure you change it back to false at this point and save that. Back at our site, we're going to go to reports. And we can go to available updates or status report. Let's go to status report this time. And we see that we're at the new version that we just installed, Drupal 8.0.1. Drupal core update status. For some reason, it's giving me an error that says there was a problem checking available updates. Even though it says it's up to date, this is probably just a quirk with uh, this current version of Drupal. We can go to this page just to make sure nothing's wrong. And we see that everything's perfectly fine. Our version of Drupal core is up to date. The last step now is to go to configuration. This is just giving us the same message couldn't check for the current status or the current version. So we can ignore that in this case. Again, this is probably a quirk with Drupal 8.0.1. Now we're going to go to development, maintenance mode, and we're going to take our site out of maintenance mode so that people can once again visit our site. Make sure you click save configuration. 
And now when we go back to our home page, we will no longer have the message telling us that the site's in maintenance mode. Congratulations, you're done. You've successfully updated Drupal Core. Drupal is a powerful and complex content management system. Because of that, updating Drupal sites is a little bit more involved than updating sites on other content management systems such as WordPress. Still, it's nothing to be afraid of, although it can be intimidating at first. If you follow the steps we've gone through, and always remember to back up your site before doing so, upgrading Drupal is usually not a big deal.